Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Since I did my special video tribute to the legendary cartoonist Charles M. Schultz, who passed away 20 years later, and I still miss him after all these years. Yeah, I mean, life just hasn't been the same without him. But his legacy will always live on, no doubt. I mean, even if Charlie Brown had to deal with the insecurity and all that going around, just to know that he never gives up. He always achieve. And so was Schultz himself. I mean, even in his early life, all the way through the present until later. He had the best gift of them all, was to become a cartoonist. You know, it's part of his life. That was his lifelong dream. And the fact that he had a family, too. And his... It just goes to show you, you know, no matter what happens, you'll always be a winner. Yeah. So anyway, now that Valentine's Day is coming up, I figured, you know, why not do a Peanuts special review? Because I have done some Valentine's Day special reviews already, and, and I previously reviewed another one that also focuses on love and I know I did another one that's <laughs> right in the middle of the summer but makes sense I figure I review someday you'll find her Charlie Brown which is the 22nd primetime special that aired on CBS on October 30th 1981 before Halloween <laughs> go figure but the story about Charlie Brown and Linus going on a journey that he actually spotted a mysterious girl on TV during a football game and he was hoping that he'll be able to find out who this girl is that he remembers yeah and he's also joined in by Snoopy and Woodstock it stars uh, Grant Weir as Charlie Brown Earl Riley as Linus Van Pelt Bill Melendez and of course, a longtime producer, and he has worked with Charles M. Schultz, along with Lee Middleson, as Snoopy and Woodstock. Nicole Eggard, yes, Nicole Eggard from the TV show Charles in Charge with uh, Scott Bayo and William Ames. Yeah, before she went on to play Summer in the TV show Baywatch with David Hasselhoff. And so, yeah, that's her, <laughs> I believe. Jennifer Gaffin as Mary Jo, who happens to be the girl. And Melissa Strohmeyer as a beautiful teenager with a waspy voice. <laughs> it's uh, created and written by Charles M. Schultz, you know, based on the comic strip. And it's directed by Phil Roman. The special begins on this one Saturday afternoon. Charlie Brown, along with Linus, are just sitting around at his house. He was watching a football game on TV while Linus is just reading a book. He suddenly spots a beautiful, mysterious girl that's sitting around on the stands during a honey shot that zooms in for just two seconds. It causes his heart to melt. But then he was crushed when he found out that the game ended, and he felt that he'll never see her again. But not determined to lose what he feels that is his true love, because he doesn't want to give up, he had Linus to help her find her, just to go on their journey. By the next day, I joined by with Snoopy and Woodstock. So first, they go to a football stadium trying to find out where she actually sat it turns out that it was at tunnel number 13 because this was Charlie Brown's lucky number <laughs> so he determined to have Linus to sit on that particular roll right onto the, the field to picture exactly what he remembers so <laughs> giving him the signal by having him pretend that he was uh, the girl and was actually waving and that's how he pictures it in his head so then 
Charlie Brown and Linus try to go ask someone at the ticket booth to find out who she was, but they don't even know particularly. However, they suggest to check at the season's ticket records downtown, where they can be able to find the address to all the um, the people out there in that particular same row. So that's where they got the address. Only to discover that there's only a few girls that might be the ones who've been on the game. Of course, with Snoopy and Woodstock joining by, they're just going around playing football. <laughs> and they're just walking by, you know, going far away to Happy Valley Farm. I mean, how did they got there? Well, you never know. <laughs> okay. So, at that point on, um, they also went on to the exercise machine, so they were just trying out some of the, you know, the, the equipment that they have, you know, such as lifting weights and stuff. At this rate, you know, lifting one of those machines that you have, you know, the ones where, you know, one of those arm machines, rest. But, of course, Woodstock started the machine and, <laughs> and went out of control. <laughs> that was pretty funny. So anyway, they they took the bus for Linus and Charlie Brown. Snoopy and Woodstock were left behind. Um, they finally made it to that one house, and that's where they met the first girl. Happened to be voiced by Nicole Eggard. And she was very ugly, with a buck tooth. Charlie Brown decided to rave all the signals to Linus just to tell him that, hoping that uh, he would be the one for her. But with uh, Linus trying to look at his signals, he was telling Charlie Brown was telling him, "No, that's not the one." So he figures that it might be another girl. So they had to make a phone call. Well, for Linus just helping out because Charlie Brown's too nervous to ask out. He's afraid that, you know, he's going to be rejected. Or what seems to be. I mean, it's hard on him to actually meet someone because you know what's going to happen. Um, so when he calls the girl from um, the next house, it turns out that this girl was totally mean-spirited, totally rude to them. That he was ready to hate, hang up and tell him that you're just bothering us. But Charlie Brown just didn't want to give up. So he decided that, well, let's just take the bus all the way to where it's located. So that way we'll be able to meet the girl. And um, once again, practicing all the signals, you know, it, if it's a thumbs up, then that's the one. But if it's a thumbs down, well, they got to continue to search for more. So they searched for that girl, and it turned out to be a teenager, a very beautiful teenager. That's a blonde. Um, but she has a raspy voice. And apparently, um, unfortunately, but apparently, she was very excited who the uh, the guy was just when Linus was telling her but we learned that she can't date any younger kids at her age so I told uh, both Linus and Charlie Brown to get lost they had to continue to go on their journey but he was afraid that you know it's way too far away it was at the Happy Valley farm so if, if this is the case well and we'll just forget it. But at this point on, Linus was lucky enough to find the address, so they had to continue to go walking around just to make it there. And then they suddenly spotted Snoopy and Woodstock, you know, because they made it, only to be chased down by a bobcat that looks exactly like Brutus from Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown. Yeah, hard to believe. <laughs> so, 
So it's not exactly Brutus as you may think, but it's just kind of amazing that they would actually included that cat. <laughs> so they're being chased down by that cat. Same goes with Charlie Brown and Linus. So they had to find a way to actually get to the house of this mysterious girl, and that this will be his lucky day, and hoping this is going to be the right one. So once uh, Linus finally enters, with Charlie Brown giving him the signals, hoping that this is the right one, well, that's where it leads down to what we found now to be a beautiful girl. Now, you thought that maybe it's a redhead, but it's actually a blonde. And she actually has a bracelet, And it turns out to be the girl named Mary Jo. And that's when Linus suddenly became very smitten with her. He got so nervous that he didn't even bother to check the signals that Charlie Brown had. Because he was asking him that this is the one. So he didn't pay attention. He realized that he did actually had in common with her. So Linus just went inside the house without Charlie Brown. So Snoopy and Woodstock had um, tried to get through in to the house only to be attacked by the cat but luckily Snoopy had actually uh, went and was ready to attack the cat. It actually turns out that this cat might have been basically Mary Jo's. They've been in there all day until by night, yeah, he was all alone, hoping that uh, Snoopy and Woodstock, along with Linus, will finally appear. And yes, this is where he tells Charlie Brown that you should have uh, seen her. She's actually very beautiful. We actually had in common. I'm starting to fall in love. Yep, it just turns out that Linus is a traitor because he didn't even pay attention to Charlie Brown, and he was telling him that that was her and you didn't even tell me you know that that's the one and you didn't even ask me if you can actually take be able to tell me that that I can go inside to be invited for milk and cookies which apparently he had milk and cookies and then we learned that um, yes Linus is gonna end up being invited to our barbecue uh, with her family at the local farm the the very following day um, which I know it sucks and then after that Charlie Brown just felt completely insecure and depressed knowing that he just lost his true love that's when he decided to go all the way back home ready to fall asleep hoping that this whole thing was just a dream like it never happened or maybe he's hoping maybe Mary Jo might show up but but that wasn't the case when Snoopy just came by just so he can get fed. So yes, the next day that's when Linus uh, came by, you know, just leaning on the wall telling him about his problems. Knowing that Linus doesn't have much time because he's already on his way to Mary Jo's. But then he reads a book that's given the quotes from Alfred Lord Tennyson and another quote by W.B. Yeats. It's read, "'Tis better to have love and lost him, never to have love at all. And does the imagination dwell the most upon a woman won or a woman lost? And then he says, I can't stand it. Yeah, it's a letdown. Very disappointing peanut special and completely predictable too because you know exactly what's going to happen next. I mean, you know from the start that what was going to happen. But at the same time, it was decent. It's not the worst of the bunch, but hey, what could we do? <laughs> um, but I understand because Charlie Brown is very desperate. You know, he needed love of his life. You know, he figured, you know, this will be his only true love that he'll be able to to see 
before it's too late. So I, I, I can understand that, you know. And the fact that having Linus uh, helping him out, I mean, even though he is very nervous, that he was afraid because he wasn't so sure if this is the right one. But it is kind of mean-spirited at times, too. I mean, particularly the, the teenager that they met, because since uh, Linus did call her, we figured that this girl is not exactly the right one. I mean, yes, because I, I can't see the chemistry there. I mean, even with that raspy voice, and even though she is beautiful and tall, I, I couldn't see that. And neither was uh, the first girl that was very ugly. And I'm surprised that was voiced by Nicole Eggard. I mean, imagine that. Summer as the ugly girl. That's just... That's just totally wrong. And Linus, in this episode, he just feels like a traitor. He might as well be, because even you can tell that he didn't even want to do this at all. But he was forced into it by Charlie Brown, because he couldn't help it. I mean, he even says that, that if, if this is not going to work out, then forget it. Just, you know, you're on your own. But... That's the problem. Um, but I'll say this, though. The best scenes in the special were Snoopy and Woodstock when they were playing football in the football fields. You know, Woodstock was trying to capture the football, but I know he's having trouble because, after all, he's a little birdie. <laughs> I mean, he tried, but then the, the football actually bounces twice. And then it crushes him. <laughs> the next scene, of course, was the exercise program. We see Snoopy just working out. Um, and Yeah, which I just mentioned it already. Which is very funny. <laughs> or the fact that they're being chased down by the Bobcats. Until he finally um, got even with it. Yeah. Now, it is kind of confusing, too, because you're thinking that this same Bobcat may be Brutus from Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown, hoping that if Mary Jo was actually related to the bullies, that would have been a really strange concoction here. <laughs> yeah. But at, at the end of the day, I mean, while it did have a nice song, um, it was sung by... Becky Reardon, it was called Alone. It's actually a very beautiful song, but it's also very sad because the fact that we see Charlie Brown already depressed, but then suddenly becomes happy, you know, thinking about that he might be able to get a chance if he ever does. But it was very beautiful. Um, we also note that um, this was nominated for an Emmy Award for Outstanding Animated uh, Program, as well as Outstanding Individual Achievement and in Animated Program for Director Phil Roman, but didn't win because of the competition that was going around. And I guess it makes sense, because it just didn't seem quite right for this special to win. But it had won some better Emmys of other specials, so that's cool. Um, and they were lucky enough to actually broadcast um, scenes with the adults, you know, when Snoopy and Woodstock was crossing the street pressing the button. And you do actually spot, of course, the teenager, as I mentioned. So it's some nice information here. But otherwise, um, it's what it is. I mean, it, it's a decent special, but it's no way near as good as any of the other specials that follow. So it's as disappointing as it could be. So Anyway, that's someday you'll find her, Charlie Brown. And I know Charlie Brown will definitely find her. If we could. And I give the special two and a half stars. Just to be fair. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. And have a happy Valentine's Day. 
and I'll see you later. Bye.